everyone, it's Andy Zitzman, founder of the Game Time Movement, where I'm on a mission to helping you and one million other people step up your game. In this short three to five minutes every day, I'm going to provide you with inspiration, motivation, and empowering information so that you can wake up, have a little pick-me-up, get fired up so that you step up on a daily basis. So get ready, because it's time, it's your time, it's game time. Hey, what's up everyone? It's Andy Zitzman and welcome to today's show. Today, I'm gonna talk to you about overcoming fear. That's right, my four steps to overcoming fear. It's a process that I call friend your fear. And you know, if you're an entrepreneur or you're anyone that's about to do anything great in life, if you've decided to make it a point that your life, your business is gonna have meaning, purpose, and passion, that you're gonna do great things with your life, you are gonna experience fear and you're gonna experience it over and over and over again. You know, many people out there will say, you know, I just wanna be fearless and I wanna learn how to like, you know, just be, have never have fear. And what I want to tell you is that, you know, I don't think that, that that's actually possible. I don't think that's true. I don't think fear ever really goes away. Because if you think about it, once you get to one point in life and then you want to step up again and step up again, every time you want to go towards something great, fear is likely going to hit. Now, yes, you can learn to manage your fear and you can learn to actually leverage that fear into something great. But to have the expectation that fear will never happen is probably just not realistic. In fact, Fear itself is an emotion. And so fear is, a, it's a warning sign. It says, you know, it says, warning, something, you know, dangerous is about to happen. Imminent danger is in the area, you know, and that's what fear is. It just gives you that warning. And so the question becomes then, when we experience that emotion, that feeling, what do we do with it? You know, many people I talk to, they, you know, as including myself, at times, Fear hits and then I do nothing or fear hits and I go to this negative place and I just spend all my time in, in you know, in this fear and what could possibly happen negatively and, you know, I'm going to embarrass myself or I'm, I'm not good enough or whatever it may be. But the reality is that we already have a process that we leverage for fear. It's just a matter of creating a new process, one that allows us to leverage fear in a positive way. And so that's what I call friend my fear. You know, and I have been afraid in my life many of times. You know, I moved to New York City when I was 21. I was terrified of moving to New York City. You know, I didn't tell a lot of people that, but I was. You know, I, I started a, a career in a Fortune 500 company when I was 24 years old, and I was terrified. I had no experience. I really didn't know what I was doing, but I worked, I managed to fight through my fear and to do it anyways. And when I left the corporate world to start my own business as a coach and a speaker in this podcast, I had tons of fear. You know, but the reality is this, over the years and over time of developing this process, practicing this process and going to this process, every time fear hits, I've learned to overcome my fear and to leverage it into something positive. And so I hope today in sharing with you my four-step process that you too can learn to overcome your fear and to leverage it into something positive. So, friend your fear. It's a four-step process, and the first step is to face. The second is to embrace. The third is to act, and the fourth is repeat. Face, embrace, act, repeat. Come on, say it with me. Face, embrace, act, repeat. Face, embrace, act, repeat. That's right. Get a little bit of positive energy going because whenever fear hits, that's exactly what we need to do. The first step is to face it. So fear hits, what are you gonna do? What I do is I just take a moment, I say, all right, I'm feeling afraid. You know, I bring some consciousness to it. I actually bring some awareness to the fact that I'm feeling fear. I'm feeling that I'm afraid of something. And so just by bringing that consciousness to it, it allows me to take a moment and just calm down and settle into the fact that I'm feeling my fear. So you face it first and foremost, face it, feel it, allow yourself to even go negative if you have to. In fact, that's what most people do. They go negative. And so what you do after you face it and you get conscious with your fear, you go to step two, which is embrace. Embrace your fear. Now, what's normal and what's you know commonly conditioned in most people is that you're already embracing your fear, but you're embracing it in a negative way. So think about what usually happens, you know, and allow yourself to not only feel the fear, but allow yourself to go negative. You know, have all those you know concerns of what could happen if you actually try to do something great, or how you might fail, or whatever the negative things are that happen. But you know what I'm talking about. All 
those negative things and just make a decision to say, okay, I faced it. I've embraced the negative. Now it's time to step two, embrace all the positive possibilities. That's right, embrace all the positive possibilities. You've heard the term before that fear is false evidence appearing real. Well, like I said before, I don't think fear is actually false. I think it's a very real emotion. However, the projection and what we do next with our fear, when we go to that negative place, that's absolutely false evidence appearing real. In fact, when we go positive, it's false evidence appearing real because the reality is nothing's real until it happens. So if we're going to leverage fear and go into the negative, why not? Take a moment and embrace all the positive possibilities as well. That's step two. And what do you do with step two in embracing all the positive possibilities is take out a piece of paper or close your eyes and just spend some time with yourself and embrace all the positive possibilities of what could happen if you got through that fear, if you fought through that fear. So for instance, if you're a coach, a trainer, a consultant, you know, envision all the people that you could possibly help if you stepped through that fear and started your business. Embrace, you know, if you're a speaker, embrace you know all the positive possibilities of what could happen if you step on that stage and you actually do a phenomenal job and you inspire and motivate and move people to actually do something great with their life imagine that feeling embrace those positive possibilities do that in any scenario any of the positive outcomes that could happen and I promise you this what will start to happen is courage will start to build up inside of you and now you'll be at a place of power you faced your fear you've embraced your fear and now you're in a place of power in fact Mark Twain, uh, or actually Nelson Mandela, said that courage is not the absence of fear. It's the triumph over it. So courage is the triumph over it. And what I like to say about courage is that courage is nothing more than the expansion of fear into something positive. So step two, embrace all the positive possibilities. Courage is nothing more than the expansion of fear into something positive. You get to that state now, you're powerful, you're confident, you're courageous, and then you go into step three. And step three is act. That's right, now you act on that fear. You've heard people say, lean into that fear, step into that fear, act through your fear. That's right, you gotta act because without action, you know, they say, Faith without works is dead. So without, you know, you can go and envision all these positive possibilities, but now you gotta take that action. That's right. So you face it, embrace it, and then act. And so what do you do to take all that action? In fact, why don't you write down 10 actions you could take to fight through that fear, or 10 actions that you could do to create some momentum and put into motion exactly what you're afraid of and that you need to overcome. Just again, write down all of the actions. Create a plan if you need to. Create a map if you need to. But then just make that decision. Just make the decision that you're gonna take one immediate action. Because as soon as you take an immediate action, that fear starts to subside, your courage increases, and now you're ready to take more and more action and you create some momentum. So in step one, face. Step two, embrace. Step three, act. And now, once you've acted and you've taken that action, what do you think you gotta do? Step four is repeat the process. That's right, because fear will never go away. It's never going to go away. It might minimize. You'll get great at leveraging your fear into something positive, but it will never go away because you, as a champion, you, as the person that's decided to step up your game, to step into your greatness, and to do great things in your life and to continue to up-level and up-level and up-level, you're always going to be faced with fear because your goals are going to be big. Your life is going to be big. You'll be playing a bigger game. And every time you do that, fear is going to hit. So you got to step for repeat the process. So again, to be a champion, to truly unleash the champion inside, to step into your greatness at any moment, you're going to be faced with fear. And what I suggest you do is leverage that fear into something positive. Be courageous. And like I said, be courageous and expand your fear into something positive and leverage this four-step process. Friend your fear. Face, embrace, act, repeat. Face, embrace, act, repeat. Face, embrace, act, repeat. That's right. Overcome your fear. Step into your greatness. It's time. It's your time to friend your fear. It's game time. Hey, thanks for tuning in today. And thanks for stepping up your game. Here's what you can do to spread the movement. 
Go to GameTimeMovement.com and be sure to share your Game Time Moment of the Day, your GMOTD, so that others will feel compelled to share their Game Time Moments too. And if you haven't already, subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher Radio and please be so kind to leave a rating and review so that we can reach 1 million people and encourage them to step up their game too. This is Andy Zitzman. Reminding you, it's your time, it's game time, till next time.